Hello, everybody. My name is Steve Gutman. I'm a senior business development manager at Forth. And today I am uh, standing in for my colleague Sergio, who uh, would normally be uh, giving this presentation, but he's busy doing something else. And so I'm going to be presenting to you today about Forth Equity and e bikes. And uh, I'll be talking a little bit about our approach to program design and implementation. Uh, with a special focus on um, on bicycles. So, Forth is a nonprofit organization that works on all things electrified transportation. We work on uh, shared mobility, on smart transportation, and on e-mobility, ranging from uh, trucks and buses, all the way down to cars, bikes, and even electric scooters. Our mission is to accelerate the use of smart transportation to move people and goods in a more efficient, cleaner, and equitable way. So um, Forth is active in four main areas. Um, we are a 501c3 as well as a 501c6. A C3 is a traditional nonprofit organization a C6 is a trade organization. So we, um, we not only work on um, transportation advocacy, but we also work um, as a trade organization. We have members that include automakers, e-bike manufacturers, uh, e-bike retail shops, um, EV charging station manufacturers, uh, consulting groups, electrical utilities. Uh, we bring people from all these businesses, utilities, and communities um, to support the growth of the industry as well as living wage jobs and uh, economic development in general. In addition to strengthening the industry, we also um, work on transportation policy as it relates to elect uh, electric transportation. Um, we do a lot of demonstration projects um, to uh, all with an eye toward accelerating the adoption of these new clean uh, uh, low carbon technologies. And then we work on various, uh, in various ways to accelerate market adoption. For example, we host, uh, at least uh, we used to host until the uh, pandemic began, uh, regular ride and drives where people could come out to an event and um, for free, in a zero pressure environment, because we're not selling anything, um, they could test ride, uh, test drive um, electric cars uh, to see if uh, you know that uh, uh, if an e-bike, uh, sorry, an EV might be the right uh, the right vehicle for them. So Forth has had a long commitment to advancing equity in everything we do. Um, the, you know, the, the reason for this is really pretty simple. We believe that um, if we can bring new uh, clean transportation technologies to uh, disadvantaged communities and uh, promote the adoption of these new technologies in those communities, then other communities that are better resourced um, will uh, will also uh, end up adopting them. But if we focus on, um, on communities that have more resources first, as most um, businesses would tend to do, then the benefits of electrified transportation uh, will take much longer to reach uh, the grassroots and indeed may never reach them at all. So we bring uh, new transportation technologies to traditionally underserved communities because we believe that this is uh, really crucial to the success of um, this transition to uh, to a, a low carbon transportation. So I'm going to talk about three specific um, projects that we um, either did, are doing, or hope to be doing soon, all of which involve uh, e-bikes and um, are, I, I'm highlighting these, at, while I'm highlighting these, I will focus on how we designed them to incorporate input from uh, local communities um, and design them in ways that we hope uh, will bring direct benefit to uh, community-based organizations and the folks they, they serve. So the first project was our community e-bike project. And 
Uh, we did this a few years ago, actually before I joined Forth, about two years ago. And um, we did it in partnership with um, the Community Cycling Center, which is an organization that if you haven't heard about it, you should check it out. Um, they um, have been working uh, with uh, kids across the Portland area and particularly lower income kids to help them get onto bicycles. Um, we worked with the CCC because they already worked very, work very closely um, uh, in some of these disadvantaged communities and have uh, great established relationships there already. The idea of this program was uh, less to focus on kids and more to focus on adults, and specifically adults who are transit dependent and don't have access to a car, either because they don't have a license or because they can't afford a car, um, but could still benefit from more flexible mobility than uh, just the bus. Um, so we partnered with the CCC, and under this program, we got uh, 10 bikes from Mahindra, which, manage, which uh, manufactures Gen Z bikes. And then we loaned out the bikes um, to three cohorts of uh, just under 10 people and uh, gave them a, a safety uh, education lesson on how to uh, ride e-bikes safely. And then we let them use the bikes uh, for several weeks and um, just uh, listened and learned. And uh, we did find, as we hoped, that um, these e-bikes uh, became a very valued and uh, re reliable means of transportation for, um, for people in the community. Um, I don't know too much more about the, uh, this project, but um, I do know that we did develop it uh, the way that we try to develop all of our projects, and that is not sort of, you know, on our own in a room someplace, but with active involvement from community-based organizations and members of the community and um, to address a real need of that community. The second project I wanna talk about briefly is uh, the e-bike lending libraries program, which um, started a couple of months ago, and it actually started, uh, was started by uh, a fellow named Kyle Johnson, who runs the Go Buy Bike, um, uh, Bike Valet and Repair at the base of the Oregon Health Sciences University Aerial Tram. At the base of the tram, there is a corral where about 350 people a day park their bikes. They then ride the aerial tram up to the top of the hill uh, where the hospital, most of the hospital is, and where there's very little parking. And so the uh, hospital uh, has done a, a lot. They've been working closely with, with Kyle to encourage more and more um, OHSU employees to commute um, by bike and then um, lock up their bikes at the bottom of the hill, take the tram up the hill. Um, what we did with, um, with Kyle is he and I teamed up to uh, solicit e-bike donations or loans from several local bike shops. And those bikes are stored in a, um, in a secure uh, shipping container overnight. And during the day, they're made available to uh, people who work at OHSU and other folks in the area who want to test ride an e-bike. They have to sign a waiver. Uh, they get a little bit of, uh, uh, they get a helmet. They get a little bit of, um, uh, of uh, orientation on how to ride an e-bike and what to be careful about. And then they can take the e-bikes out for a test ride. Um, OHSU has been very supportive of this. And in fact, they have actively promoted the availability of these e-bikes for test rides to their 17,000 or so employees. They have also told those employees that if any of them want to purchase an e-bike, they will subsidize that purchase to the tune of $250. Um, and they've had several takers already. It's been going for a few weeks. Uh, what we're uh, hoping to do next with this program is to expand it to at least two new locations. One of those locations will be at the city of Milwaukee. If we uh, get the grant that we've applied uh, for, uh, one bike will be stationed at the city of Milwaukee. Their fleet manager will manage the bike. It will be, become a part of their vehicle fleet. But um, every night, uh, a city of uh, Milwaukee employee that wants to test ride uh, an e-bike will be able to check out the bike, ride home, bring it back in the morning, uh, and put it back into the fleet. In this way, 
their mayor, Mike, uh, Mark Gamba, who is a, an e-bike commuter himself, hopes to promote the idea of uh, commuting e-bikes to uh, other members of his staff. Anyway, it's a, uh, it's a pretty interesting approach. The other uh, location where we would expand this program to, if the grant is funded, is to Forth's own electric vehicle showcase. This is a downtown in the World Trade Center in downtown Portland. And out of this uh, location, we already, we have about six electric vehicles that are parked all around um, the showcase. And we make those, those vehicles available uh, for short test drives uh, by members of the community who are thinking about purchasing an electric vehicle. We would augment that fleet of uh, six cars with about an equal number of e-bikes that would also be available for people to check out and test ride um, and uh, consider purchasing them. If we do get the grant that we've applied for, we will also make $250 subsidies available to constituents of um, community-based organizations that serve uh, uh, low-income communities and people of color throughout the Portland area. Um, we don't have that grant yet, but we're hoping that we get it. And if we do, um, we will be announcing the availability of these e-bikes for test rides um, as soon as they become available. The, the third um, uh, demonstration project that I want to highlight today is one that, again, this is in, uh, in uh, just the, the beginning stages. We have applied for um, a grant, a very small grant, from the or Oregon Department of Transportation to develop a business model to essentially take over management of um, five smaller city bike share systems that um, have all, uh, all folded in recent years. Um, bike share is a tough business and um, it works in big cities if you get a big sponsor, but in smaller com uh, communities, it's harder for for-profit entities to um, operate successfully. And um, the state found that out um, as five uh, bike share systems, one in Eugene, one in Corvallis, uh, one in uh, Salem, in Ashland, and in Bend, um, they all recently folded. The one in Eugene is still being operated by the city, but the city is eager to pass it on to um, another entity. And Forth is interested in exploring the possibility of running all five of these uh, community bike shares as not as a single system, as five distinct systems, but all operating on the same uh, platform. So the same reservation system, the same member processing system, etc. So one platform with five independent bike shares. The benefits of having them all on the same platform is there would be fewer overhead costs and certain functions like member processing and the reservation its system itself would be centralized. Meanwhile, the work that has to be done on the ground would continue to be done by people in the community. Um, that work includes things like rebalancing, uh, repairing bikes, um, uh, maintaining bikes, uh, that sort of thing. So um, we, uh, we don't have this funding yet, but if we get this funding, uh, we hope to demonstrate that by pooling resources and centralizing certain functions, um, small communities can continue to enjoy the benefits of bike sharing. And over time, we also hope to um, raise additional funding so that we can begin to transition uh, these um, regular bikes to either mixed um, uh, fleets of both regular bikes and e-bikes or entirely to e-bikes because there is quite a bit of data that shows that um, bike share schemes that use e-bikes get much, much higher utilization than, uh, than bike share schemes that use traditional bikes. Um, a couple things that I want to point out about all of these, um, all of these uh, programs. One is that in no case did Forth develop these programs by ourselves. In every case, we have worked very closely with community-based organizations and nonprofits that uh, that um, 
are rooted in the communities uh, that already work with people in the communities and that um, that better understand the needs of those communities than we do. So, uh, by, but by partnering with uh, these nonprofits, we're able to design programs that um, are not based on our ideas of what a community needs, but they're, they're ideas that come from the community and sort of trickle up. And we believe that this is a fundamental uh, component of, uh, of good program design when, uh, when trying to design programs that are focused on, on equity and inclusion. Uh, that's uh, the end of my presentation. I'm looking forward to the Q&A. If any of you have questions that uh, we don't get to or that you're uncomfortable asking uh, in a public forum, please feel free to email me at steveg at fourthmobility.org um, and I'll be happy to uh, answer them in that way. Uh, thank you very much and I look forward to the, your questions.